as I break the fourth wall like Deadpool. I'm Sebron Reese, um, father of this dude here, Isaiah Reese, uh, PE coach, uh, sports coach, video CEO, uh, father of five kids and a husband, Deacon, mm -hmm. Square, uh, deep involvement in a lot of things. Let's go. So, my name is Isaiah, and I am interviewing my dad. So, the first question is, what was the best moment of your life? I have a lot of those moments. Um, first thing that speaks, sticks out is uh, 2015. Uh, I've been coaching for almost 10 years and I was able to win my first real championship as a head coach and it was a personal accomplishment. Uh, and the majority, all my kids were there to see it. My wife was there to see it. We were all on the sideline together. Uh, two of my boys actually participated in it. And uh, it was a very, very big ordeal. That sticks out. And even to this moment when certain music plays, like the Avengers theme, that was part of the highlight reel, I still tear up a little bit. Hmm. So, how did you... How did you feel when you won? Man, do you know a sense of relief? Uh, the, when you go on a roller coaster and you're going all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, and you get to the top, right when you're about to start going down, and you're like, oh, ah, that feeling right there. It was there. Especially when they dropped the ball in the end. Boy, I was screaming, I was yelling. It was such joy that I had in me. It was like accomplishment. You waited 10 years. Accomplishment. Yes. Okay. Um, the second question is, have you ever been to jail? Not jail, as in like bars jail, but I have been to the police station. Ironic enough, exactly this day, December 9th, 24 years ago, I got arrested as a 15 year old for stealing in the concession stand at Northeast High School. Uh, I stole two Snicker bars and a water. Everybody else had book bags full. And uh, I was arrested and they took me up to the police station. There was some, it was clear walls. So it was like a holding cell, I guess you could say. And so um, I was in there, talked to the police officers. All the people who got caught, we were in there talking with each other. Uh, so, jail, jail, no. Police station, yes. And what was the experience that you had? Oh, man. As a 15-year-old, um, here's how I look at life. And I recognized it back then. Stop moving. I always look at stuff from the future looking back. So like when you say, yeah, looking back on it and then people tell their old stories, that's how I looked at it. So it was, it was an experience for me. It was almost like a field trip. It was my first time ever getting arrested. First time in the back of a police car. Uh, first time going into the police station, actually. Doing the fingerprints and the, the mug shot. I was actually smiling in the mug shot. The lady said, you don't have to smile. I was like, oh. And I actually kind of enjoyed it. Uh, in that aspect. It wasn't like I was linked up with some thugs and somebody was going to really do me in or something like that. No. It was one of those things that I'm going to remember all of this so I can tell the story later. Lo and behold, I'm telling it now. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The third question is, what was your first ever fight that you had? All right, first fights I can actually remember. Uh, I guess I have to go with the most significant fights because I fought my sister all the time. Me and her used to squirt off. And it was time when she would mess with me and I used to watch WWF and I would try my little wrestling moves on her. And sometimes they work. <laughs> uh, my mom used to say I used to fight Bernard in preschool, but I don't remember any of those. Uh, I fought a little boy when I was in eighth grade. 
But I do remember when I was like seven or eight and I fought Kiki. Yeah, I fought a girl. She was a tomboy. She was like a dude. And she started swinging on me because I guess I broke up with her. And so I poked a little spunky in the ear with a, a pine needle. And she decided to use that to try to fight me. And after she had to punch me, slap me, try to knee me in my scrotum, I couldn't take it no more. So I swung back and we was going at it, boy. We was, <clears throat> I slammed her on the ground. I started punching her. Her brother tried to kick me in the throat. And I started swinging at him and then they both started jumping on me. It, it was, it was, it's a story that I always remember, boy. Look at him. Yeah, it was a girl. Surprise. Yes. Interesting. Hmm. And while you were fighting, what was going through your head? Oh, I was thinking of all kind of moves to use. So we going at it and I'm like, all right, Mike Tyson punch out was the game. So I was using old video game adages. So I'm like, yeah, I had my set like Lil Mac. I'm punching. And I'm doing the correct stuff. She dutch, she punching, I'm dodging. We going at it. Then somehow, uh, oh, an ambulance went by. And they broke it up, because it was not just us. It was her cousin Dennis. It was Nippy, Ricky, Spunky. All this was around him. All fighting her? No, no. They, they knew that she was going to fight me. That was the thing. They all knew, so it was almost like they set it up. Set up, yeah. Right. And so uh, we fighting right in front of Ricky's house, which is next door to my daddy's house. And the ambulance went by, and they stopped. Cause they figured, oh, the ambulance gonna go by. If they see them fight, they gonna stop, which will make sense. So, what happened was, I was like, all right, as this ambulance go by, I'm gonna grab him, I'm gonna put him in the headlock. And so, somehow, she let me get her in the headlock. So I had him in the headlock, and my mind was like, punch in the face, punch in the face, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and I hit it three times, it was like, ooh, she got snot. At first I thought they was gonna say, she bleeding. She got snot. And I saw it. And it almost like she looked up at me and I saw the snot. And I was like, ew. I don't want her snot on me. So it's like flip her. In my head, I'm like, flip her. So I turned this way and flipped her. And she fell on the ground. And I was like, get on top of her. So I got on top of her and I paused. And then son said, start hitting her. Bah, 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 bah. And after I did that, I thought, oh. It kicked me in the throat. It was like, who kicked me in the throat? What was that about? And I looked up. That was her brother. I don't know if Dennis, which was the cousin, told me to do it, but he just automatically kicked me in the throat. So I was like, oh, I got to get up and swing on him now. So I got up and started swinging on him. And somehow I fell. And she got on top of me. And I looked at her and she paused. And I looked at her. I look at her. She looks at me. Oh, my bad. And, um, <laughs> and so uh, something says, Turn over and do a push-up. So somehow I was able to turn over and do a push-up and she never touched me. And so I was able to get her up off me and then he was in front of me, she was behind me, and I would swing on one and I could feel it hitting back in my head. So I turned around and swing on her and say, so I said, keep doing it, go, go, go. And then when I turned around, boom, got me and I tried to turn around, boom. And then it just started, they closed in on me. And I was, so I'm saying, duck your head and yell for your daddy. So I ducked up like this, and I was like, yo, dad! I kept saying, yo, dad! And then I said it loud enough, and my mama came out the door. As soon as she opened the door, everything stopped. And the fight was avoided. She said, Rashad, get in the house. They didn't continue on. I walked into the house, and that was the end of that. Then they started throwing rocks in the yard, and Patrice wanted to go out and go fight them, but my man daddy was like, no, don't go out there. And Trees was like, look, they're throwing rocks in the yard. Don't go out there. As long as they don't get this house, we all right. And so I took a shower and then proceeded to watch the Cosby show later on. Did you ever get, have any more encounters with them? With them? No. In those aspects, it was you fight now and it's dead now. Uh, matter of fact, we went right back outside. The next day, it was playing football on the street. Me and Spunky, Kiki ended up liking me again after some months and wanted to be my girlfriend again. And shoot, that was just what we did. It was kid stuff. Hmm. Now this comes to my last question. Did you ever run away? Run away? Mm 
As in, pack up my stuff and get missing from my no, house? No, from like, uh, the trouble man run away. Trouble me. Oh, like a war bin? Mm-hmm. Ha! <laughs> I did one time! One time I got a whooping. Well, no, I didn't get the whooping. It had to be around uh, daylight savings time because it was dark early. In our world, the longer it's dark, the later it feels. So it was probably like 7.30, 8.30 plus minus. I don't even remember what day it was. I'm assuming it wasn't a school night. Um, but we wanted to stay outside. It was me, Trees, my sister, Danica, Twan, Truck, Nippy, Ricky. And what time was this? I don't, I can't remember. What year? In 88, so I had to be like eight, seven, eight, nine years old. And so, um, everybody, mama kept calling because we was like, let's see if we can stay out the longest. And we just stood there in the middle of the street with the street light on. And, uh, say, everybody get called in, everybody get called in. And it was me, Treese, and Danica. And we was like, well, we the last ones. And she was like, I'm about to go in the house. And we was like, oh, we'll go in the house too. Trees walked in first, and Daddy was right at the door. And he grabbed her, and bop, bop, bop. And she said, Daddy, I was waiting for you to call us. And he was like, you know what time you need to be in the house. And started tearing her behind her. And I'm just sitting there, and it's just like in the movies where it's loud noise, and it fades into like a low tone, and you can hear your thoughts in like Dolby Digital Surround Sound. And I swear it was like just like a poof. Rashad, she getting towed up. You should run. Boy, you know better than run from your daddy. But you've never done it before. You're right. You've never done it before. If it's going to be a time to run, you better do it now. And I was like, you know what? That sounds like a good idea. I'm going to run. I ran because I was right there next to the door. I ran out the door. And I got by the gate. And I paused for a minute. And you can still hear trees getting a whooping. I swear she got a whooping for like 30 minutes, it seemed like. But it was only probably like 40 seconds, if that. That's and, a long time? Yeah. And, and he looked Tracy? at she, she was four years older than me, so it had to be 12, 11. Who is she? Trees is my sister. All right. And so my daddy looked at me and said, you'll be back. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking he finna chase me. And see, I was fast, too. Man, I, my daddy wasn't going to catch me. I was, yo. Where was I going to run? I don't know, but he wasn't catching me. So I walked right to Nippy House, which was right across the street. And uh, I knocked on the door. He answered. And say, uh, can I come in? He's like, yeah. And I went into his back room and played with some Lego blocks. And his mama was like, Rashad, what you doing here? Of course, me being honest, my daddy was about to whoop me and I ran. And she laughed. <laughs> and then she said, What's your phone number? And at that time, you're supposed to be happy at the fact that you know your phone number. So I was bragging on the fact that you knew my phone number. 327-3941. Okay, I'm going to call your daddy. <laughs> I'm being honest with you and you going to call my daddy? So she called him on the phone. And we're like, yeah, they talking and laughing. I'm like, oh, well. As long as they talking and laughing, we good. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Click. <laughs> you done? And so, she's like, I'm going to take you over there. You supposed to be saving me. So she take me on over there. And I'm walking quietly. We get to the front door. And I'm standing at the front door, right along with her, in the same spot I was standing at when, poof, you should run. No, you should not run. And so, um... They sitting there talking. They laughing and having a good little time. It was probably only like 30 seconds, but it felt more like 10 minutes. And so in my mind, I'm like, as long as she's sitting here talking with him, I'm safe because he ain't finna beat her in front of me. And the moment I put a period at the end of that thought in my sentence, all right, y'all, I'm going to leave. I'll see y'all later. Go leave me. She walked out the door. I'm still sitting at that door. He's sitting in the same spot that he was beating trees at. We looking at each other, eyeball to eyeball. How's you feeling right now? Man, I'm looking like, mm. here we go. And I swear you can hear the, <whistles> wah, 
wah, wah. I saw the dust ball go across between us like we was about to be cowboys and shoot off. And he said, I'm going to beat you worse than what you were supposed to get. And of course, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, hmm, if I can dive through his legs, I could probably get to my room and be safe. And so, shoot, I done ran. So I might as well try this. So I ran toward him because he stepped toward me. I ran toward him and I tried to go under his legs. And I got almost free. Enough to where my booty was right there between his legs. <laughs> enough for him to go, bow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I dropped. <laughs> and he tore my behind. Before I got to up, he probably beat me the same as what it would have been beforehand because I couldn't feel a difference. A whooping was a whooping. That jump hurt. But understand, I got that whooping. But I ran. And honestly, it kind of felt good to run. I got my one time, so I can't have any regrets of saying when I look back in time, I can say, dang, I always hear stories of kids running from their parents when they get a whooping. Well, I got my story too. And so, there you go. Mm -hmm. You know, we as kids when you hear stories about people getting whooped, I start when I imagine I start like standing there, and then I usually start to burn up. Like I feel so hot, and like I'm starting to sweat. Like man, I'm gonna get this whooping. It's gonna be hurting, and I gotta start everything up. So. I go to sit on the toilet and be like, I'm using the bathroom. Y'all better hurry up because if you know my parents, they're not going to wait for you. Yeah. They're going to whoop you in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, speaking of which. I'm going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Final and last question. Have you ever... No. What was your worst... Fear that you had. Hmm. Like the thing that was scary the most. I was never afraid of the normal stuff that people were afraid of. So like horror movies never bothered me. Walking in the dark after about eight years old never really bothered me. Um, I can say walking in the back alley at my daddy's house when I had to take out the garbage when it was pitch black. Yeah, that, that was kind of like something. But that was like a fear of something might get me. But I'm fast, so I'm going to throw this stuff in the garbage. You know, I ain't even going to look. I'm going to throw it and boom. <laughs> but uh, even then, no, I would say uh, rejection. Yeah. Um... I was a real shy individual as a younger person growing up. Even up until I was like 25, 26. I was a shy dude. Females always liked me, but I never really, for one, I really didn't care for females all that much. I wasn't in that world. But also, as some people would know that some girl would like me, they'd be like, go with her. And I was always scared of if I said something wrong, or if I tried to go with somebody and they'd be like, no! And they'd start to pick on me and all this other stuff. Um, or if I got into a relationship, which boy-girlfriend relationship, well, ain't nothing serious there, uh, that I would run dry, as in like, not have a good phone conversation. Or we get together and go somewhere, like, what do I do? Oh, and they're not gonna like me because of it. That was like my biggest fear, so. Me doing that, feeling that way, I stayed away from females in that capacity. Um, pretty much females usually got at me. And so, that was like my safeguard. But, now, I don't have that fear. Uh, it would run parallel with speaking in front of crowds. Because up until 21, if I got in front of maybe 7 to 8 people and I had to speak or something, it wouldn't happen. I was stuttering. I was pausing. If I was just to read a book, knowing they looking at me, I was stuttering the books. Those run parallel. 
until I overcame that doing my Masonic practices and stuff. Uh, what is a Masonic practice? Uh, well, it's a, it's a fraternal order. And we had to do a bunch of speeches and a bunch of presentations in and things of, of that nature. Huh? In front of people? Yeah. And it was in front of five or six people, but it was in front of like some pressure. All right? You mess up, you're going to catch it. And so uh, it was one of those things where you know what you're saying and you treat everybody else as if they got to get all this information off of you. And that's how I went about it. I could say my ABCs to anybody, but if I had to speak intelligently in front of somebody, I would always mess up. I could perform in front of somebody or crack jokes, but if I had to speak and say something smart, I would mess it up. I would be scared. And so after I went through my Masonic stuff, it was nothing to me. I ain't care about what you're thinking. And that was it. I did not care about what you thought. In many cases, your, your fear of speaking is what you're thinking someone else is going to think of you and then you try to meet up to it. I didn't care. So, I became great at speaking ever since. Well, that was my last question, so thank you for your time and thank you for the interview. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Push the button.